Welcome to Keeping Up at the Capitol with Senator Tom Casperson. This program comes to you each month from Lansing to keep you informed on issues and events important to the Upper Peninsula. This month, Senator Casperson discusses economic development in the UP with Escanaba City Manager James O'Toole and Marquette City Manager Bill Vida. And now, let's join Senator Casperson and his guests. I want to welcome our viewers today and uh, to get started we're going to talk about Upper Peninsula economic development and get into the whole topic. Uh, but I've got two special guests with me today so I'm going to start out by having both of you introduce yourselves, give us an idea of your backgrounds, maybe tell us the position you're in and maybe where you came out of and, and a little bit about your past. So maybe we can start with you. Yeah, I, I'm Jim O'Toole. I'm a city manager, city of Escanaba. I've been with the city for 25 years in uh, uh, various positions uh, from code enforcement to planning to uh, to now city manager. And uh, one of the things that I've been concentrating on over the last several years is uh, economic development and retaining uh, businesses that we have in the area and recruiting new businesses where we can. Thank you. Uh, I'm Bill Vida. I'm the city manager here in Marquette, and I've been the city manager for three years. I've had a 30-year government career, all kinds of different governments I've worked for. Uh, but Marquette's my hometown. I'm a hometown boy. Uh, went through the entire school system there and graduated and moved away to go to school and had the opportunity to come back, uh, be with my family again, be in the place that I love, and I'm in a position where I can be a service to my community, and hopefully we'll be able to do good things together. And if we're not, certainly won't because we're not trying hard to. Yeah, for sure. Bill, maybe we'll start with you. Give us an idea of um, Marquette is a beautiful community. Anybody that's traveled to UP that's been to Marquette all agree. Um, what are some of the challenges for the Marquette County area, um, the city, and um, maybe some of the opportunities? Thank you. Well, then thank you, too. I, I think the whole central UP is very beautiful. And Marquette's certainly fortunate, and I appreciate your, your kind comments. Uh, we're, we're in an interesting position, it seems to me. The, the county has this long heritage of natural resource industries. And so if you look at areas kind of immediately outside of Marquette, you've got mineral extraction, you've got logging, you've got some fishing, you've got kind of the traditional industries that were there since 1850 when Western Europeans first kind of came in and settled the area. But when you get in the city, you've got a university, you've got a um, medical system with probably the, the most employees of any employer in the Upper Peninsula really kind of headquartered out of there. You've got all the federal, county, state, city employees headquartered out of there, Northern Michigan University, uh, all the hospitality industries. And so the, the kind of support that that economy needs versus what those traditional economies need I mean it's very difficult to, to chart a course where there's a lot of common, common infrastructure, where there's a lot of common goals, where there are a lot of common objectives, other than everybody wants to preserve the beauty of place. They don't want to sacrifice the quality of life, but they want to see it economically grow and, and fit in and be consistent. And when Jim and I first started talking, that wasn't unlike the challenges that Escanaba's faced as they've transitioned from really those kind of natural resource industries just dominating the economy to one where manufacturing now is joined in. They have higher education in, in the community. They have the same health care system in their community that Marquette has. And so what, what we found was that as we're evolving together, uh, there, there are a lot of similarities, and even though it might not always be the easiest thing to find some common, common view with your neighbor immediately on your border, there's a, a common view of what it takes for the whole area to move forward as we work with the rest of the state and the rest of the world. And so uh, what we've been down visiting this week, trying to look at how can we, how can we find cooperative ways to put in place an economic development strategy where all boats float and we can focus on those common objectives rather than maybe things that are only interested to one party or another. That's really the way to go. That's the only way we're going to be able to get the things we need for the Upper Peninsula. Um, Jim, I've been born and raised in Escanaba, my family. I raised my family there, so that's hometown for me. But uh, how about the Delta County area? Well, you know, the Delta County area, it's been a, uh, it's been a re revitalization effort over the last 25, 30 years. And, and what it brings to the table, I mean, in addition to the natural resources, is 
we, we tend to be a natural hub for, for many industries, just the way we're laid out. Uh, you know, it's uh, multimodal. You can get there by air, you can get there by road, you can get there by rail and by sea, so to speak. And capitalizing on that and, and supporting the business that is in place to keep them there and to, to help them grow and to recruit business that will uh, capitalize off of, off of them being in place. Um, you know, we're, we're, we have a strong shipping industry uh, for many years there with the ore that comes out of the Marquette County region and a lot of it comes out of uh, shipped onto the Escanaba port and then sent off to market. Uh, we have one of the leading paper makers in the world right in Escanaba doing some uh, pretty amazing things. But the future, uh, the future is what I keep looking at with respect to uh, wood products. You know, be it lumber, be it bio woody mass, be it uh, the veneers that uh, are being shipped out, uh, from the UP out all over the world. And how do you get these products that are in the UP into in that central Marquette County, Delta County region? How do you get those to market either nationally or internationally in the most economical, in quickest way because time is money and so we're we're we're, we're building on that and capitalizing on that and trying to complement uh, uh, all the resources and leverage all the resources uh, and, and that's where this collaborative effort between uh, the the two communities really kicked off Jim um, Billy alluded to it a little bit but let's let's talk a little bit why you're in town today and I want to use the term micropolitan Yep. Um, so we can explain a little bit of that the purpose of today and then maybe what that means because we'll we'll be talking on TV radio whatever and use those terms but sometimes people won't quite understand what you're driving at and I think Marquette and Delta County right now the adventure you're on together is unique and I think really an example for a lot of people probably the state how to work together with communities yeah I mean when you look at the region and, and you do a head count uh, the, the central region accounts for between 70 and 80 percent of the population and, and a great many of the manufacturers and, and job base and you know micropolitan uh, we're, we're we're not quite an urban and we're not quite a rural uh, you know we have a little bit of everything in and in, in which is the micropolitan and you know you look at uh, areas in the lower peninsula as an example uh, the folks down here to drive an hour from Lansing to Grand Rapids isn't much thought. It's just we have that same opportunity. You know, Escanaba, Marquette, about an hour away in that whole region, and we can draw in a, a, a vast number of people into that region and get them from point A to point B in the, in the most efficient uh, way of doing it. And in and, and looking at the area not as the city of Escanaba or the city of Marquette, but as the region, the central UP region. And in today's, in today's world, collaboration, cooperation is the name of the game. Uh, we have to be all in this together because we should be in our, heading to the same destination and uh, we want to get there to the benefit of the people. You know that we hear a lot about that, the collaboration, you don't see a lot of that yet. Yeah. That's why I say this is unique. Bill, if you could weigh in on it a little bit. I mean, really what you're doing together is unique and you're not getting caught up into us versus them. And it is a great example. Would that be fair? Yeah, well, you know, maybe another way to, to think about it is if you look at that bubble that Jim was describing, it's about 220,000 people. So if you were gonna say, okay, an area with 220,000 people that was maybe more dense. So maybe Ann Arbor, the core city of Ann Arbor, maybe not with all the suburbs, but the core city of Ann Arbor, 220,000 people, or, or a similar core, core kind of an area, metropolitan area. Well, how many school districts would they have? Ann Arbor has one school district. They have one economic development organization. And so because they're more dense, because they're not as, as widely spread out as what we have in the central UP, they have a, a unity of purpose and they have an agility that when they need to advocate for all of those people in that area, they really only have to go to one place, one board, one way of doing things. 
But when you go to the central UP to represent that same amount of people, you have two counties and you have maybe 34, 35 townships and you have at least two, two to four cities, depending on how, how you want to count them all together. And you have probably more economic development organizations than you can count. And so just trying to find a common voice to represent all of those different interests is sometimes about as tough as trying to get three people to figure out where they want to eat dinner any given night. And so uh, if we don't find a way to cooperate and speak more with common interest and more towards common goals, the people who might have a different situation are always going to be heard louder and their, their views are always going to dominate. And so Jim and I, from having watched this now go forward and trying to figure out how do you really pull together in a way that gives you more agility, more, more beyond what you can bring to the picture yourself, the only option that areas like ours have is to find ways to consolidate the, the views, to cooperate where they can. It doesn't mean all of a sudden we're going to become one great big place with one great big name. We're going to preserve all the things that we love we're, we're going to have some natural competition. We're going to have some natural compliments. It has nothing to do with giving away any of our sovereign identity, but it has everything to do with making sure that for those issues that unite us, that we've got the strongest and most powerful voice that we can have. And so uh, that's really, when, when you look at the history of the UP, that's really what's innovative. I don't know of any other time, actually we were, we've had a lot of chats about this, I don't know of any other time when you've seen communities recognize that and come together to try to put that to put that structure in place and to pursue those joint objectives. And it's Maybe, not just the city ahead, of Escanaba and the city of Marquette. I mean, keep that in mind. We have resolutions of support from 31 local units of government in Marquette and Delta counties, in, including educational institutions. And so the cooperation on this is, is phenomenal. The fact that we're all talking about this together and the fact that uh, we're, we're all moving in the same direction in an agreement with the principal. Uh, it just shows what we're capable of doing with this in, in moving it forward and it's, it's pretty exciting to see uh, you know opportunity like this um, unfold in front of you. What might be a simple opportunity that we could share with the, the viewers that they would say, oh, now I get it why you're doing that. What, what, what would be an opportunity that you can cite? You want to take it? You want me to take Go it? Go ahead and no. Well, the big thing is infrastructure. You know, if you take a look at businesses that want to locate in our area, they're, they're having to incur an awful lot of expenses that they might not have to incur somewhere else. Energy might be more expensive access to the markets just because they're maybe in an area that's a little bit more removed from some of the more common core areas that there are in the nation. They have to decide that it's worth it to them to locate in the UP in spite of the fact that it might cost them a little bit more. And so our job as local governments is if, if they say we need access to international markets, every township, every city, and every county can't build its own international airport they're going to have to have access to those world markets and you're going to have to come up with a strategy that addresses do you need it for cargo, for passengers, whatever it might be. If you need energy, a lot of the, the energy that we consume now in mining, which consumes hundreds of megawatts of energy, if any of the new mining activity that's playing itself out in the, in the commercial world actually comes to fruition, they're going to need power. If you want to tap into your higher education as your centers of innovation and bring more white collar information management type jobs to come online, they're going to need power for their data systems and their data centers. If you look at telemedicine, if you look at the medical sector expanding, they're going to need access to power, they're going to need access to telecommunications. And inherently, if you need it between point A and B and you only control the investment side for point A, you need to have some coordinated way where you can lower the barrier to competition and help it provide an incentive for people to locate in the area and connect the dots. And so a lot of the things that, that we've been chatting about that we're really hoping to get are those investments, those investments in infrastructure that help make it easier for businesses that are there already 
to access the world and become more competitive and become more successful, or to provide the kind of environment that would attract like-minded businesses or other businesses that like our quality of life, like all the other different things we have to offer, and don't feel compelled to maybe say no because the infrastructure is not available to support their needs. And so where would we be with five years with something like this? You'd see a lot of focus from local governments saying, here's the common infrastructure we need to make our whole area more successful, whether it's better roads, better rails, better seaports, better airports. And, and here's how they're all connected together. You bring up the power issue, and that, that, that's a pretty big one. And I, it, it does make sense because rather than one community make the argument to uh, someone that the infrastructure or the power access is uh, a limited situation, by getting it so that it's uh, broad across the whole Upper Peninsula, now you all have ability to com compete uh, but for businesses, but none of us have the ability to compete if we can't get the power. Exactly. Right. We have to have the right backbone in place, and, uh, and you know, and like any good utility, it's it's a continual loop of that system, yeah. and that is what we're working on uh, yeah. as, as part of this as well. Yeah. You, um, we're in Lansing. We're taping this in Lansing, so maybe you could explain a little bit. Um, you're down here visiting. You're not just visiting. You're here for a purpose. Maybe explain to us a little bit who you've been meeting with. Well, we've met with a number of, uh, of uh, representatives and senators today to talk about in, what will it take to get an amendment to the next Michigan development law that was uh, put in, in, in place in 2010. Yeah, in 2010, the, the law was passed and it created five uh, next Michigan zones. And, and all five of the zones are located under the 43rd parallel. And I've been following this legislation, as has Bill, since its inception. And the, uh, by locating all five, you know, we're, we're at a disadvantage in the UP, uh, whether perceived or real. And so the thought was, a sixth regional one with two of the biggest population centers in the UP partnering and, and cooperating. We think that we can, with, with the success of getting that bill amended, we think we can deliver a product to, to industry up there that will uh, help revitalize the state of Michigan overall and, and, and really sustain the UP. Because the idea isn't just Marquette, Delta County. That, that isn't the idea. That's the beginning. This thing's being modeled to grow. As we succeed and, and as we win on some of the things we're, we're doing, we, we, we expand it. Because there's, as you well know, the UP, we're fiercely independent. And we have a lot of product that we can bring to the table from raw materials to people. Uh, we, we have some world-class uh, uh, brains working in the UP. They like living up there. They like the quality of life that uh, Bill was referring to. And, and in today's world with today's technology, they can contribute to the overall uh, good of the state. Uh, from that central region, and, and, and they're ready, willing, and able. But we just need to get this bill enacted to create that sixth zone so that we have standing with the rest of, of the state and, and, and we're on an le equal level playing field. Bill, you've been meeting with folks down here. Maybe you could tell our listeners what the reception has been like. And I, I ask it because, you know, clearly you're not always going to be. Um, welcomed with warm arms and everything you know you you've got an idea but somebody down here might have a different one so maybe you could just tell us uh, how the reception's been between the legislators you've met with uh, MEDC how's it been going thank you well first off thank you for your hospitality and your leadership in in helping us coordinate this trip and helping us get the word out uh, Lansing is an interesting place and it's important I believe for uh, people like Jim and I to come down and engage directly, not just with our own representatives, uh, but also with the other areas that our team is going to need support with. And 
sometimes that doesn't always mean sitting down and speaking to people who are welcoming you with open arms. Uh, sometimes that means meeting with people who might have different views or different kinds of concerns. And the good news is everybody's very courteous and very patient and very willing to listen. They're also very good card players. And so uh, you, hear, you hear not only all the reasons why this is a great idea and why people support this, but you also can see that you're piquing people's curiosity about perhaps why there aren't their own analogs to Jim and I sitting in the room asking for the same thing. And at the end of the day, it really all comes down to, and I think that your earlier point, why is this so exceptional, uh, it really comes down to being self-aware enough to know what your limitations are, to know what your gaps are, and then to actually be put on the spot and be prepared to explain why what we've proposed this trip is necessary and why we need the support of the state to do it. At, on a very fundamental level, it's really easy to walk into somebody's room and say, Next Michigan is all about creating these zones for providing multimodal incentives for business to come and help revitalize the state. But guess what? Right now, Next Michigan ends at the Mackinac Bridge, and the UP is not part of Next Michigan. That's a good place to start a message. And once you kind of get them through the inherent inequity of having to live in an environment where our tax dollars aren't going to the general good of the state, but might be supporting these these next Michigan zones that we don't have any ownership over. It starts a conversation, provokes them to think a little bit more, uh, asks them and helps us draw out the issues that they might be interested in hearing about later from from our leaders here, and really sets the tone, I think, for what we as the UP need to do to be successful if we want to see this to a, a successful conclusion. So. It's a very useful, useful, awkward, uh, uncomfortable, anxious, frustrating, but positive day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably not too unlike any one of the days you spend down sure. here any given day in session, but uh, it's vital because uh, we know one person alone can't do it. And the more voices that we have explaining it and trying to push it through, the better off we'll all end up at the end. Yeah, that, that's well put. And I was going to ask you too, Jim, on your perception, but I want to preface it with the idea to say thank you because you, you know, down here I can drop legislation or the legislators work on that, but when we get our folks to come down, and especially in the UP because of the distance, uh, to get you to come down here and, and pitch these things on, on your behalf, but also to help with the movement of the legislation uh, is, is huge. It's very important. Uh, this is not a one-man situation. I mean, it's all hands on deck. And, and the dynamic of where we come from make it that way somewhat, I think, more so than even other areas. So. No, it, it, it absolutely does. And, you know, and everybody is grateful for the leadership that, that you've taken in, in, in launching this. You know, at the end of the day, everybody that we've met with, we all have the same goal is to make Michigan better tomorrow than we found it yesterday. And, you know, we might not all agree on all the principles and all the ways of doing it at all the time, but we're in it for the right reasons, and, it, and it's a better tomorrow. And I think that the uh, people we've met with this morning, they, they've been fair, and they've asked us some tough questions, and that's good. That's good. That, that makes us work harder and trying to uh, come up with the best possible program that can be that can be put together. This is the first step of a, of a multi-step process, but without the amendment to the next Michigan, we don't, we don't get to even start. And we need, we, we need that opportunity to be able to take a shot and, and do something on a regional basis that is going to impact everybody statewide. I was going to ask, and Jim might have answered it, but I'll, I'll ask Bill, maybe you could add to that, but what is the hope uh, of the legislation? What are we hoping to accomplish here if we get this legislation through this zone, the sixth zone? What, what's the, so the viewers understand what we're aiming for here? What? Okay, well, the, the legislation as it currently stands caps the number of these zones at five, and that means since five have already been picked, 
at this point, unless there's a legislative change, we can't accomplish any of the things that we've been saying. It's not just about organizing. It's not just about creating the interlocal agreements, or it's not just about focusing on these things. What, the, what that zone designation gives you is the ability to invest in the zone and to, and to use the incentives, the investment incentives of that zone to attract business. So without that, we can certainly still organize the same way. We can do all those things, but there would be no ability to bring new resources or incentives to bear. And so at, that's the most valuable element of the next Michigan Act is the, is the ability to create these business incentives for growth. So we need to get that changed. Five are already used. If we want to compete, that means you need at least six. So we're looking to have the legislation expanded simply so that we can compete, so that we can go out and apply to be that zone. But of course, that's not where the story ends. Right. What, that's where the story begins. Once the legislation enables us to apply to become a zone, we still have to go back before the Michigan Strategic Fund with an application, with the participation of all the jurisdictions who've already submitted resolutions and maybe even a few more to say, here's how we're gonna manage ourselves. Here's what the goals of this organization are gonna be. Here's our strategic plan with specific outcomes that we're looking for. Here's how we're gonna measure it. And here's how we're gonna use these incentives to the best benefit of Michigan. And once we put that application together and it's reviewed by that board and should they approve, we'll be able to then use the next Michigan zone designation throughout the central UP and really start implementing all of the different kind of investments and projects that we'd like to see to help to help improve economic growth in the central sure. region. Okay, we're getting pretty close on time, but I wanna hurry up and get this through. Uh, maybe just, Jim, give us an idea of how the stakeholders have been embracing it so the public understands um, there's a lot of people involved here, and, and it's been, I think it's been going very well. But it, well, it has been, and it's really been a grassroots effort. Um, you know, we, we've been bringing the, uh, the public as well as the elected people throughout Delta and Marquette counties in on this every step of the move. Every time we've done something, we've, we've briefed the folks on it and, and explained why we're doing it. And, and, and to that end, uh, as I stated you know, a little bit earlier, we, we have not only their verbal support, but they put it in writing at, at, at meetings where they have adopted an actual resolution to, to get this moving forward. And it, it's, it is that important to everybody in the UP uh, that, that we work together. This is, this is bigger than any one of us. It's, it's bigger than any one community, any one individual. We're, we're talking monumental change in Michigan and, and we have some best practices in the UP that we do on a normal day-to-day -day basis that we really think can benefit the whole state. Okay, we are just about out of time. So real quick, each of you, what's, a, what's something that, that our community should attend in each one of your communities real quick this summer? There's gotta be some big activity. I know we've got one in Escanaba. Well, the, 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 kicking off July 4th in the city of Escanaba, we have our 150th uh, birthday celebration and so, Seven days of uh, activities, concerts, fireworks, uh, log rolling, uh, uh, the, the whole gamut of uh, you know, how Escanaba became Escanaba, so we're pretty happy. Good deal. Bill? Uh, Art on the Rocks. Art on the Rocks, beautiful. Yeah, we like to bring everybody in. We get them in our beautiful downtown Matson Park. Uh, they get to enjoy all of the different local art that's created in the Upper Peninsula. We have folks coming from uh, Escanaba, from the West End, from the East End, from outside the area. Uh, you get a chance to walk along the beautiful shoreline, uh, enjoy nice warm summer days, and maybe stop by a restaurant or two and enjoy yeah. some of the local beverages. So we'll look forward to seeing everybody sure. there. Very good. Thank both of you Thank for this. You. I really appreciate you coming in. Appreciate it. Cheers.